Hey guys, welcome back to Will's Garage. Uh, today I got a real interesting one, a real scary one, and I'm not sure what I'm doing. Alright, before I get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know every time I post a new video. And let's get started. So, behind me, I've got 2006 Audi A6. Uh, little backstory, this used to be my personal car. Sold it to my next door neighbor. And of course, anytime you sell a car to someone close, uh, problems start happening. This one, nothing super major. Started leaking a little oil. Um, when I got to looking at it though, uh, the oil's coming from the back half of the motor. Um, leak dye in it. The best thing I could see was it's leaking from the rear timing cover. Uh, I always knew this made somewhat of a timing chain noise, a cold start, but uh, it was usually like a split second and then it was fine, so I never really worried about it. Uh, when I got the rear cover off though, I could see the driver's side upper tensioner uh, assembly, and I call it assembly because it's a big aluminum assembly, it's got three guides on it. Two of the guides themselves are, are missing uh, the ends of them essentially. So the chain on that side is a little slack, so uh, that's what I'm hearing when you start this thing up real quick. Uh, you're hearing the slack in the chain before the hydraulic tensioner can take up that slack. Um, what I'm going to do today though, um, is I'm going to put new guides on this. Uh, new upper tensioners on this, uh, clean everything up, um, and basically try to reseal the motor at the same time. Uh, like I said, it, it had an oil leak, so uh, getting the rear timing cover off, uh, I had to remove the um, oil filter assembly, uh, which is where I think the main oil leak was coming from. Um, as well as the rear timing cover, the upper covers. So right then and there, I mean, that's four major seals that I'm gonna be resealing. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the cam girdles and I'm going to reseal those because there's a little bit of oil in the spark plug holes on a few of the cylinders. So I already have the, the engine out of the car, the transmission off of the engine. Um, don't have to go this far. <laughs> you have to separate the engine and the transmission at least to get to the timing chain if you're doing a timing chain job on this thing. Uh, I have seen some guys that have done just the upper uh, tensioner assemblies with the engine still in the car. Um, but like I said, I'm also resealing the engine, so it was just easier for me to drop the entire drivetrain um, so I can get to everything on the engine. So uh, let me show you guys now what I have done so far and try to bring you guys up to date. All right, as you can see here, I've got both upper covers off. I've got the main uh, lower timing cover off as well. All the chains are still in place. Um, I've got the valve covers off on both sides. Um, this is probably something I should point out. Um, this here is a tool to lock the camshafts uh, at top dead center for timing purposes. There's one for uh, each side, as you can see on that side. Um, you can buy these relatively cheap. Uh, I think I've seen them as cheap as maybe $40 for the pair and the tool that locks the crankshaft underneath. Um, I just made them. I have access to a machine shop. I just put them on the bridge, a uh, piece of aluminum on the bridge port, machined it out, um, and now I have two cam locking tools. I'm using a drill bit here to lock the uh, balance shaft. This is the PTO chain uh, assembly here. Uh, I am reusing the chains. Uh, you know, like I said, the only thing that was really the issue, and I'll show you guys here, uh, the back half of this uh, guide is missing, so you can see the slack in the chain there. And the same for the top one here. So, I mean, you can see this. This is 
This is literally what they were hearing when you start the car cold. No oil pressure until the oil pressure comes in and the chain takes up the, the slack. You're hearing this chain rattling around in here. So the guides themselves are actually in really good shape. There's just about no wear on them, but I'm replacing the main timing chain uh, guides here, 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 uh, just because looking from this one on this side, they are very brittle. Uh, I don't want them to break, uh, but the chain itself, uh, you know, I don't think it's stretched very far. I'm not really worried about it so much. I'm going to be using, uh, well, Volkswagen and Audi's online technician program. It's called Elsa Pro. So if you know anyone that's in a dealership, um, this is what a dealer technician has access to so they can see how to uh, properly disassemble, time, seal, whatever you need to know. All that information is there. I'll try to post some of that information in the description as I can. Uh, you know, a lot of it is pretty much copyrighted. So, um, you know, I can't just post anything, but I try to post the important stuff like, uh, if I can, I'll post the, the sequences to torquing things down. Uh, I'll definitely post torque specs at least and the sealant I use to seal everything back up. Uh, I can even put part numbers for the, um, the guides and stuff like that that I'm using. Uh, one of the other things I thought was very interesting, I'm going to mention the upper tensioner guide assemblies. Um, they're made by a company, INC. Um, uh, for, the, for the OEM part, the factory part. Uh, I got aftermarket ones that were labeled INC uh, for hundreds of dollars less. The only difference is they machine off the part numbers. <laughs> they machine off where it says Audi, Volkswagen, they machine off the part number, but it still says INC. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you have to do this job yourself, you're gonna save a lot of money by using an OE part uh, instead of the OEM part. Um, all right, so I'm gonna try to set up the camera. Uh, first thing I gotta do is I'm gonna take off the upper uh, cam phasers so I can get the chain off of uh, both uh, cylinder head banks uh, because I wanna remove the cam girdle. Uh, like I said, I'm also resealing this motor. So um, I'm gonna remove those guys first get the cam girdle off and then start taking uh, some of the other timing chain components apart. Uh, actually, I take that back. I'm probably going to take the PTO chain off first, then I'll take off the upper phasers so I can get everything. Uh, for this. I have to imagine if you made it this far, uh, 
uh, already that you probably have these sockets. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the phasers. Uh, again, I've marked my phasers so I know my left and my right. Um, so everything stays together. Like I said, I'm reusing the chains. If you're going this far, I definitely recommend replacing everything. Buy a whole timing kit. Um, replace it all. Uh, because this is a huge job to get to this point. Uh, I'm kind of doing this on a budget for them. Um, and this is what we've come up with to try to save some money. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull these phasers off. Uh, I'm going to get the... Um, tensioners out. guys I just wanted to point out here uh, looking in the manual it shows that there are three different uh, guide track mounting bolts uh, as you see in the picture one two three uh, depending on which style you have they say there's different torques and from what I could see uh, they're all 10 Newton meters uh, but the difference is number one being only a 30 degree turn uh, the others are 90 degree uh, it says to replace them uh, as well uh, for this application I have uh, number two and six so I'm gonna go 10 Newton meters plus 90 degrees on those okay so like I showed in the picture showing uh, the torque spec and your bolt these are the bolts I have um, so these were tightened down and then an additional 90 degrees for all three guides and I've replaced all these uh, guys these little factory guides here um, the tensioner here uh, which is hydraulic uh, this gets six Newton meters and an additional 45 degrees on those bolts uh, but at this point my crank is locked my main drive chain is in place um, so the next thing I could do is install the upper uh, chain guide and uh, timing chain for the camshafts and then I'll install the PTO chain with its tensioner. Okay so this is my left side uh, cam guide tensioner assembly. Uh, it takes six bolts. Uh, I have all my bolts laid out here. I'm going to put Loctite on all these. Um, the holes in the cylinder head, I've cleaned out with brake clean as well. Uh, the surface here where the gasket goes is nice and clean. No dirt, nothing. Um, you've already seen I've put the main drive chain on, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the guide tensioner into place, get the bolts started, get my chain 
just draped around and then I'm going to position in my upper cam uh, phasers. Um, make sure you use new bolts for these. Uh, off the top of my head I think the um, torque spec is 40 newton meters then 80 newton meters then an additional 90 degrees. So these do need to be tightened very tight and uh, that is a torque to yield bolt. So it's always a good idea to replace the bolts when you uh, replace these. So I'm going to go ahead start installing this guy and then I'll come over to the right side and do the same thing. These are the left bank cam phasers. Uh, there's no difference between the right and left bank, they're both the same. Uh, the difference is uh, one is labeled exhaust, one is labeled intake. Uh, it actually, I know it's not going to show up on camera, but it's, it's laser etched into the uh, cam phaser. Uh, it says intake right here underneath the Audi symbol. Uh, on this one, it says exhaust. Uh, on the sprocket as well, this one says EX and this one says IN for intake. So make sure you put these on the right camshafts uh, when you install them. Um, since my cams are being retained with that plate, it does not matter which way these go. Um, just make sure you get the chain on there. Uh, this is intakes, intakes go on this side. torque yield bolt, it's a good idea to put uh, a little bit of oil on the flange side of the bolt. It'll make it easier when you're doing your torque and your uh, torque yield. It also gives you a better torque uh, or a more accurate torque on the bolt. So I'm going to run these down. I'm going to tighten these. Uh, at least just run them down for now. I'm going to get the right side uh, chain tensioner and phasers in with the chain, uh, tighten everything up, and then uh, I'll show you guys how the PTO chain goes on. Okay guys, I know uh, I didn't show you guys how I loosened up the bolts for the cam phasers. Because these are very tight. Um, this is the tool I made up uh, to hold 
the cam phasers while either removing or tightening uh, that center bolt. Now that bolt gets tightened down or pre-torqued to 40 Newton meters uh, and then a final torque of 80 Newton meters. Uh, after that, you're going to tighten it an additional 90 degrees. So there's quite a bit of torque on that. And you don't want to rely on the cam uh, holding bracket here um, to uh, tighten that bolt. Uh, you'll either break the camshaft, break this bolt. Uh, it's just not going to hold it. Um, the way this works is uh, I just drilled two holes, a center hole, so I can get the socket in there. And it's pretty much just going to give me a leverage point so I can put this on the phaser, get the socket in here, hold the phaser while tightening uh, this bolt. Uh, the one thing I need to uh, mention to you guys is when you are tightening this, the pre-tension, you need to make sure you're rotating the phaser clockwise. Uh, the reason for that is the tensioner is on this side and if you do it say like this you're going to have slack on the chain here and the, your your timing is going to be off so you have to make sure that you have some kind of pressure pushing down while you pre tightening these to your 40 newton meters um, after that the these should be cinched enough on the camshaft where they're not going to move you can then uh, keep this from rotating while you torque down to your 80 newton meters and then finally your 90 degree turn so i'm going to go ahead and do that now uh, to both sides. Okay guys, I want to clarify that a little bit more. So, as you can see here, if I turn this counterclockwise, as if you were going to use that tool to, you know, counter hold as you're turning clockwise, your chain's going to be slack, your timing's going to be off. So that first torque, you need to actually hold this uh, counter hold tool so you're turning the phaser clockwise on the right bank exhaust camshaft. So hold this clockwise while you tighten this middle bolt to 40 Newton meters. Uh, you could then go ahead and do the intake, the same pre-torque it to um, excuse me, pre-torque it to 40 Newton meters. When you get to the left side here, um, because the exhaust is now on the left side and the tensioner is here on the right, you need to hold the intake cam phaser the same way. So you're gonna hold this till it's um, clockwise, pre-tension your 40 Newton meters on your intake camshaft, and then come back with your exhaust camshaft, 40 Newton meters, and then finally come back, do your 80 Newton meters, and then your 90 degree turn. Okay guys, so all four bolts, all four camshafts are tightened down. The initial 40, holding the exhaust camshaft on the right side cylinder head clockwise so you could tighten both of these. Keep the tool in the exhaust camshaft holding counterclockwise, I mean holding clockwise while you tighten this bolt as well as the intake bolt. Don't move the tool for the initial torque. On the left side, you're going to hold the intake clockwise, pre-tighten two center bolts, 40 newton meters. Once you have that, come back, hold your exhaust camshaft. You're going to tighten this down to 80 newton meters. This time you're going to have to use the tool to hold back you spinning the bolt. 
Once you do the exhaust, come, hold the intake, tighten it to 80 newton meters. Same on the other side. Whatever one you're tightening, make sure the tool's on there holding it back. You don't want to use the chain to try to uh, hold back uh, 80 newton meters and especially not the 90 degree turn. Uh, 80 newton meters comes out to be about 59 foot pounds. So I'm now going to use my breaker bar. Don't want to use your torque wrench. I've said this before, you will damage your torque wrench. I'm going to hold each cam separately and I'm going to turn these bolts to 90 degrees. Uh, after that, everything should be timed. I can then release the tensioner uh, grenade pins and I can check, make sure everything uh, is timed properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these 90 degrees now. Okay guys, last bit of this timing chain setup is the PPO pin. Chain that ties the balancer to the crankshaft and drives the oil pump. There's how he calls it the PTO. This is a PTO chain. This is the PTO tensioner. It's just a couple pieces of spring steel here. That's what tensions it. Um, put this guy back on. Like I said, you got to use the drill bit or the special tool. You have it to hold the uh, sprocket in place. Uh, if you do remove the socket. Like I said, the bolts have to be centered in the slot. Um, other than that, uh, there's not much else. The, the PTO shaft that drives the oil pump, that doesn't matter where it is. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and put this guy on. Let's start on the balance shaft here. That's going to go to the tank shaft. I'm going to stick this guy in here. So, that's pretty much it. I'm going to put the bolts in here. Uh, again, clean the holes in the block with brake clean, glue them out, get all the oil out. Uh, my bolts are clean and dry. Put Loctite on those. Uh, install these and then torque the spec. The torque for the bolts that hold the tensioner on, uh, it depends on the year uh, engine it is uh, and obviously the style tensioner. Uh, this tensioner in particular gets 10 newton meters to those bolts and then an additional 45 degrees. So I'm going to put these bolts in, like I said, with some Loctite and tighten those down. Okay guys, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, now up to the steps since all my timing chains are installed. Uh, as you can see in the picture, this is the dowel pin on the right side cylinder head. Uh, Volkswagen Audi recommends um, filing it off in these dimensions. You can see six and a half millimeters, eight millimeters in the wide dire direction. And then that chamfer gets installed uh, facing up, uh, you know, parallel with the uh, lower part of the cylinder head there. It says it helps to get the uh, timing cover in place with the cylinder head installed. So I've gone ahead and I've removed the dowel from the engine because I don't want to be filing anything off into the engine block. Um, just so you could see where it came from on the block, this is the hole here. So I'm going to put the chamfer in on the top part and so it's parallel this way with the cylinder head. So I'm going to do that before I get ready to install my timing cover. Um, the only other thing I have to replace on the timing cover yet is I got to put a new uh, rear main seal on and then one more time I'm going to go over and I'm going to clean all the surfaces where the sealant is going to go uh, in between the head gaskets as well. Some brake clean to dry it all up and then I'll get the rear timing cover ready to be reinstalled. Uh, the upper timing covers though, those are pretty straightforward and simple. I'm gonna put sealant on the cover itself, uh, the same one millimeter bead all the way around, and then the T30 uh, Torx bolts just hold the covers on both sides. Um, but I'm gonna get ready to do the chamfer on the dowel, and then get the timing cover prepped.
to be uh, reinstalled. Okay, I don't know if I can get this to focus. Let's try. There we go. So, there's the chamfer as per the drawing. Um, I wish this would stay in focus. So, this is going to get installed so that chamfer is facing up. Something like this, parallel with the cylinder head. So, I'm going to install this now. Okay, I'm getting ready to install the rear timing cover. Uh, besides the obvious of cleaning the cover up, uh, replacing the rear main seal if you are doing so. I highly recommend it. It is a Teflon seal. Um, on this year that I'm working on, there is an O-ring seal at this arrow and one at this arrow. It depends on the year that you have. Uh, the, I don't know if it's the earlier model. I think it's the earlier models. It only has a seal up top. The rest all get sealant. So I'm going to put in these two O-ring seals. The rest of them that are labeled one, three, four, five here gets the black sealant uh, as it's shown in the diagram here. It also specifies that in the groove it needs to be one and a half to two millimeters above the groove height uh, when you put the sealant into place. Um, same for the um, you know where the through bolts are going into these uh, ones labeled one, three, and four. So keep that in mind when you're going to um, prep your timing cover. The other thing is, uh, let's see if I can find the picture. The cylinder head gasket that protrudes past the timing cover, there are holes there. You need to put silicone in these locations um, before you put the timing cover in place. You want to do it on the bottom and on the top. Be very careful to pry down the gasket now you don't want to go too far you will kink and break the gasket there if you do you have to replace it um, but you want to put a bead of a thin amount at least of sealant on the top and bottom of this gasket where it goes against the cylinder head and then where it goes against the timing cover so I'm going to go ahead and prep my timing cover with the seals and get my uh, sealant into place and then get the cover on Real quick, these are the part numbers for the gasket. This one is for the upper portion in the timing cover. This is where the oil passages uh, go to the oil filter housing uh, through the timing cover. So there's that one. This is the part number for the um, one of the bolt holes that I pointed out in the uh, program as well. So I just wanted to show you guys the part numbers because finding these was not easy. Okay guys, so as you can see I've got the engine back together, um, a couple of key points I want to point out about the timing chain job itself. Um, first off, highly recommend you get the tools um, for locking the camshaft and the crankshaft into place. Again, I think you probably could do it without the tools, um, but I mean this is a lot of work. Uh, even if the engine's still in the car and you're just removing the engine, I mean, it's a lot of work to get to this point. You don't want to have to pull back out again because your timing is off and or damage the engine because the timing is off. So, get the special tools. Um, the other thing is, make sure you get the bolts breaking and approved sealant. Um, don't want to use regular RTV. That's sealant. The sealant from Volkswagen and Audi, I know, is a little expensive. For me, it's like 20 something dollars to... Um, so, you know, it's a little pricey, but again, in the long run, it's the better way to go. Um, I'm going to post in the description, um, you know, a list of the torque specs and stuff so you guys can have that stuff. Um, trying to think of what else. Um, you know, be real liberal. No, don't be liberal. Um, make sure you follow the directions for the amount of sealant you use. You don't want a lot to squeeze into places. Um, Getting this cover on, I have to admit, even for myself, was a pain. Even after filing off the, the dowel pin, 
uh, like they recommend. Uh, I still have trouble trying to get it in without damaging the cylinder head gasket. Uh, the areas in the corners, uh, it's a multi-layer gasket and the bottom layer uh, has two small little ribs so you could put silicone in the corners to keep everything sealed from leaking. Because of that, it's very flimsy. You have to be very, very careful when you put this on. Otherwise, you're going to be removing the cylinder head to replace the head gasket just for that. So be really careful and mindful when you go to do that. Um, I don't know if I'm missing anything else. You know, a lot of, I pointed out a lot of the differences in this motor uh, from the split gears, uh, seals that are behind here for the oil filter housing and one of the bolt holes. Um, don't really know of anything else. But if you guys have any questions, uh, I'm usually pretty good at answering in the comments. Um, so just drop me a comment below. I'll be more than happy to answer it as best I can. Um, but that's about it. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment below. See you guys next time. Bye.